Great panel. Joining me now, Gemma Tognini on the desk. Hello, Good hello. Good to see you, Gemma. <laughs> and Caroline DeRusso, head uh, host of the Royal Report, joining us from the wonderful city of Perth. It's all happening in the West just at the moment. You've got the Federal Cabinet over there. This border protection thing, I had my say at the top of the program. Here's what Peter Dutton's had to say. It's inconceivable that a boat of this size, carrying 40-plus people, could make it to the mainland without there being any detection. And the Prime Minister carried on with some stupid story about his phone not working in the car and he couldn't be contacted. He was caught completely by surprise. You've got a Prime Minister who is asleep at the wheel. Uh, you've got a situation where Labor doesn't believe in Operation Sovereign Borders. Well, there you go, Caroline. He's the opposition leader. Is this a security failure? Is this a border protection issue? Or, as the Prime Minister would have it, it's just people playing politics? Yeah, I, I, I know that's what the Prime Minister really hopes has happened, um, but I don't know how you you cut that much out of um, something like our, our, our defence of our, our border to the north and you get rid of temporary protection visas. You pretend it's all the same. You know, oh, no, we've still got operations... So well, you've got two-thirds of Operation Sovereign Borders. Let's not get too excited. I don't know how you change, have major policy and budgetary changes to something like that. And then when something goes wrong, you go, oh, well, it's the other side's fault for, for bringing it to everyone's attention. Well, those things were working. Just leave them in place. And I yeah. know that's really hard for Labor to do that, but the last time they uh, stuffed around with that policy, like you talked about at the top of the show, it was an absolute disaster. Yeah, look, um, uh, clearly there's a failure here. You, you can't ignore the failure. You can't pretend away two lots of people getting to our mainland, yet the Prime Minister says this. Peter Dutton needs to stop acting in such an irresponsible, opportunistic way in trying to seize some short-term political advantage in a way that just does not promote Australia's national interest. Riddle me this one, Gemma. Why is it Peter Dutton's problem? Why isn't he instead saying, we're going to beef up our surveillance? Because the Prime Minister hasn't worked out yet that he's the Prime Minister. <laughs> yes. Truly, I'm not being tried about it. This <laughs> Prime Minister feels like and acts like and speaks like someone who's still in opposition, like, nothing's my fault, not my problem. I'm going to cut... The, my government's going to cut a third of resourcing to this program, but it's not my fault. I mean, Scott Morrison was the guy who was lambasted for not holding a hose. Yeah. This Prime Minister says, can't take a call, I'm in the car. <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's be honest here. This is a problem, and it's not just a problem for the Prime Minister in this portfolio. It's a problem for the Prime Minister's leadership. It's weak, it's di directionless, and it's undefined. Yeah, we'll keep on that. I think it's an important point. He, he just has to accept the authority of the job and do right. something on this and other issues. I want to go to Parliament House and the drinking culture. You might have seen this from Liberal Senator Perrin Davey. The arts, uh, arts would come in and it would be a... This is what we're saying. Well, I called a Liberal Nationals, uh, you know, not a coalition senator there from uh, New South Wales. Now, Caroline, she looks half cut to me. Why don't you just front up and say, you know... I had a bit too much to drink. Let's move on. Well, look, she has said that she has had a couple of drinks. I haven't seen the whole of the footage, but, you know, from what people have said about the remainder of the questioning at that time, she she appeared to be more lucid than in that spot. Look, but as hang, someone who hang occasionally on a trips that, over that, their that, own words... Yes, but that's not a surprise, right? Some of us, may, some of us are at our most lucid when sure. we've had a few drinks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, as someone who's not much of a drinker, I, I kind of want to, you know, steer clear out of this because I don't want to be a wowser at the same time. I think people just need to be responsible. But the thing that I find ironic about this whole conversation is when you look at this issue and you talk about the, the culture within Parliament House and, and the people who, are, you know, are shouting down about drinking in Parliament House, often they're the same people who want to, you know, decriminalise drugs. And you're in somewhere oh, yeah. like the yeah. ACT where they're like, sure, you can sit out the front and smoke meth, but whatever you do, do not have a wine <laughs> before an inquiry. That's right. Absolutely. That's uh, right. Spot on. But I'll tell you, I, I think Baron Davies handled this reasonably well. As you said, she, she said she's had a couple of drinks and, uh, and on she went. We can all make up our own minds. We can all see what she said. But uh, her leader, David Littleproud, said this. 
Perrin Davies uh, has admitted she had a couple of drinks, but she was not drunk. She was fully coherent in terms of the questioning that she put forward. It was a long day, uh, and I think we all slur our words from time to time, and I think this is a bit of an overreach. Not drunk, fully coherent, too tired. I mean, why is he making these foolish excuses? I don't know. All I know is that there are some days where I'm genuinely too tired to function. And, <laughs> and, and I think you've probably been on the receiving end of some of my messages on days like that. But look, the other, the, I totally agree with what Caro said. I'm on a furious unity ticket there. The ACT and, and, and more broadly, you know, these people who want to ban everything. But Australian workplaces are mostly dry. Like, if yeah. you go anywhere in a corporate environment, typically they're a dry environment. Maybe a drink with one, like a drink with lunch if you're at a corporate function, that sort of stuff. I haven't been to a boozy corporate function, and mind you, I avoid them like the plague because I'm fundamentally antisocial for stuff like that. <laughs> but the reality is most of us are dealing with an environment that there is an expect, accepted um, set of behaviours. And I don't see a problem with beginning to look at federal parliament like a workplace that anyone else in Australia yeah. would have to go to and, and behave accordingly. Yeah, I think they could uh, they could look at that very clearly because there's a difference between the working environment there and the functions. And I know Correct. people move move between the two, but you can you can you know go easy on the grog when you're actually turning up at some of the parliamentary procedures. Uh, I want to go uh, stick with politics, but go to the West today. And the Prime Minister in Western Australia today was confronted by this front page on the West Australian newspaper. It is demanding a pledge from the PM that he's going to keep their generous GST <laughs> deal. And uh, then we see at the press conference when he's asked about this by the reporter there, Albo says he should tattoo the pledge on his arm. He writes on, on his arm for him and says it should be tattooed there. Now, this is all a bit of a, f a bit of fun for the Prime Minister, Caro, but, it, but doesn't it just underscore the, the point that his word is no longer his bond? Shock horror, Chris. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? And look, the thing is, you know, um, look, we, we have seen in the, you know, the last couple of polls that have come out that the, the decline for the Labor government has been arrested. Though I don't think they've got necessarily the bounce um, that they were perhaps expecting in relation to their backflip on stage three. But it has just mean that their word for everything else means absolutely nothing. So when Labor was here um, campaigning for the last federal election, they said that they were going to stand up for WA. And so far what they've done is they have delivered us IR policies which are so anti-industry, anti-productivity, anti-business. They've delivered us a bit more PRRT. Um, you know, there are higher income earners here in WA, but they're people who are doing all right at the moment because the state's doing all right. They're people who, if things like nickel and lithium and, God forbid, there's a little bit of a, a downturn in the iron ore price, they're all of a sudden not doing mm. quite yeah. all right. They're not the rich people the Prime Minister would like to think that they are. So, he's, he's so far, he's milked us for all that we're worth and now he wants to tell us that his word is his bond on his GST. Well, West Australians, we're pretty parochial and we're not stupid. Yeah, you're pretty, pretty parochial. 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 You're virtually a separate country, Good as we God. found out just a couple of years ago. <laughs> just quickly, I've got to show you these pictures. You would have seen them. They're, you know, shield your eyes if you're offended by too much male flesh. But here's Australian <laughs> Olympian equestrian Shane Rose. <laughs> this is this is a fancy dress event, and he's very humorously put on a mankini to do it, and yet he was under threat of being expelled from the Olympic team because this was too offensive to some people. Let's have a listen to what Shane had to say. <laughs> Something I haven't worn before and, and it's not the most comfortable attire and I, I can't no. see myself wearing one in, in the near future. No. Luckily, I've got a great saddle sponsor and, <laughs> and, uh, and my, my saddles are really comfortable. Oh, man, talk about uh, bareback mountain, <laughs> brokeback mountain. That's, that would have been a bit rough on the buttocks, I reckon, as our equest equestrian oh. uh, expert. Now, this is looks like the death of, a, of Australian humour, but I can give you the breaking news that the, the Olympic Committee have said it's OK. They've dismissed the complaint. He can ride on, <laughs> mankini Stanley, or not. she has prevailed. Look, I'm very happy to be the Sky Network's resident equestrian uh, <laughs> reporter and commentator, and I can say from experience 
that the chafing that man would have uh, ex <laughs> would have subjected himself to during that. Uh, notice he's got a saddle pad over the top <laughs> yes. of his saddle. You don't usually have one of oh. those. He deserves it all. And seriously, Equestrian Australia, get a grip. Get a I grip. understand one person complained. Yeah, yeah, get but we, at least we all had some fun around the country. But yeah, exactly. get a grip. They should have right dismissed on, it. Right on, Shane Rose. <laughs> right, right on. on. Butt cheeks and all. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Gemma and Caro. We'll catch you again next week.